Welcome to Belong, Become, Be Sent. This is your host, Patrick Taylor. I am joined here with the lovely um, Abby Kimball and the Rio Grande Minister, Mr. Josh Peck. Well, today we've got an interesting topic, which is patience. But first, we're going to get into kind of what what's going on today and what uh, who all is here. Um, so, Abby, tell us a little about yourself. So... My name is Abby, and I am a student here at University of Rio Grande, and I am majoring in business, and I am from the Galpolis area, and in 2016, I actually moved away to Georgia for five years, and I moved back this past year to come back home for family and everything, and to come back home and get an education, so yeah. Alrighty, and so... With knowing that, how has God been using you in Rock and kind of build your faith up inside of Rock um, here locally at Rio? I don't know if you've been to the OU campus or not, um, but tell us a little bit about how God's done work with you in your life around Rock. So last year, um, I moved back, and Isaac, who is a part of Rock, he introduced me into Rock, and I didn't want to do anything like I was never a part of anything I never wanted to I was always an independent child so I was always by myself always wanted to be with my mom and dad and Isaac kind of brought me into more of the faith world if that's if that makes sense but that makes sense to me but it brought me closer to God because I kind of went away from like believe like I didn't I believe that did not sound right <laughs> but um, away from God's world when I was in Georgia because he knew that I went through a lot down there by losing a loved one of mine from just moving several schools and I kind of lost connection to God and when I came back he told me hey why don't you just join Rock and just come hang out with us and I was like okay I guess so I came the first night and I absolutely fell in love with it and he has taught me to well God has taught me to believe in myself more if that makes sense so yeah, and like you said, being able to fall in love with Rock, um, I have personally fell in love with Rock, and I know Josh has as well, and we've really loved being able to minister to the ones here on campus with outreach, as well as when we go on mission trips, which is pretty cool. So, and that also kind of ties into our topic is working with patients, is because sometimes we got to hurry up and wait, and it kind of gets sometimes aggravating at some points or another. So with patients, what does that kind of look like for student ministry, Josh? Um, well, it just takes time for the most part. I mean, again, we're talking about patients, and so it's it's a little bit of a journey. It's a process because you are working with students that have a set schedule and they have a set specific thing that they have to do, which is classes and stuff. And so obviously, not only you have um, the set schedule of having crosswalk and everything like that where we can get together and, you know, fellowship and just enjoy time in the presence of God, but also you're trying to work around class schedules and you're trying to work around extracurricular activities, whether that's like sports or something like that. And, and it just gets busy because obviously you got to work around, you know, having them have time for homework and other things. And so it, it just, it gets to be a mess sometimes. I know that we were planning to do um, leadership training, and so I was trying to work with their schedules, and and obviously uh, Patrick, his schedule is always busy, and so it's just kind of stressful at times because you know you want to get everybody together right at the same exact time, but it doesn't always work like that. And so just kind of trying to find the patience in that to be able to know like, hey, like we'll figure it out at some point. It's just a matter of you know, okay, like what specific time frames work best for you and then can we pair maybe somebody else up and so it ended up being from you know instead of just being two separate classes one for each person now it's going to be one person's going to do it by themselves and then we're going to have two people in the other class and so just kind of things like that just makes it interesting now mind you <laughs> the one person is me because of my schedule and working with classes it's not easy working with college classes that's been a, worked on and assigned already from last year. So dealing with that is very interesting. 
trying to get three people in the same classroom at the same time, especially in college. And see, the fun part about it is, like, I'm thankful because you guys are a little bit of a smaller group, but even working with just three students, it, it definitely adds the challenge of, okay, like, what classes do they have? What time frames work best for them? And then if they even have free time after their classes, because then you guys have homework and other stuff to do like that. And so it just, it piles on very, very quickly. Whereas with OU, they have more students. And so I had to plan it when I was at OU on my internship, and that was a blast. <laughs> it took me probably over at least a solid, like, six days, almost about a week, just literally uh, piling on all the people's schedules, writing them down, and then just crossing over of like which ones have like the same time frames. And eventually it worked out to where I got pretty much all of them except for one in the same class, thankfully, which was a miracle, but it worked. So it's just that kind of thing, but. Yeah, and dealing with patients with classes especially is kind of hard especially with college you know high school it's one thing you got a set schedule sometimes you're on block schedules and you got uh, four blocks um, and sometimes you're on periods which is eight different periods um, depending on your high school and so it's different coming from high school that is set schedule and you're back to back to back and you have your own lunch break and then all of a sudden you get into college and it's completely different and you go to class at noon and get out at one and then you're done for the day on some occasions. So with dealing with patients with classes and schedule coming from high school, um, how does that work with you, Abby? College classes and patients is, it's really, really hard, especially this year for me, because I want to, I have three different things in my life so far, like right now, it's like I have work, I have school, and I have rock and all my free time goes to rock and the classes itself this semester are pretty more challenging and it takes more patience to get these classes and the homework done on time and especially with three online classes it's pretty pretty vigorous with patience yeah and I've got only one online class this year so I've pretty I try to work my schedule out that way I'm not doing any online classes because last year I had some online classes and it wasn't wasn't very fun to do that now some colleges they do it a little different here at Rio um, they've got it on a certain website and you just go on and you get your lecture from that well you know sometimes that's kind of hard to do whenever you're like you said dealing with in between rock and work and works kind of something that you can't really call off at the last minute like you can with rock um, so what are some ways that uh, you've found that kind of makes it a little bit easier to dealing with a busy schedule and dealing with the patience and type of thing um, going in between different things? Abby? So probably just about every night I just sit back and I look at my day and I think um, my schedule and I think how to work it out properly and it's it's pretty hard but I tell my work, I'm like, hey, I have this time off and this time off for rock and I have this time off for school. And thankfully, my boss is very accepting of my schedule because I have a very weird and off schedule, but it seems to work out pretty well. Yeah, and Josh? Um, I've definitely found that just like she said, literally just being able to sit down for, you know, even if it's just like 20 minutes to look at a schedule and be like, okay, I need to sort this out. What are my priorities that I want to mainly focus on that are like utmost importance and then what are some of the other small things that maybe I want to do but aren't necessarily important that I can probably do more on the side so obviously I have found that um, being on campus is definitely an important thing which obviously my patience is uh, a little bit low this week because I now have car issues that I have to deal with so that just adds on, you know, the extra ball of like, okay, like yesterday I had to just sit down and take the time of like, okay, what do I need to do? Like, who do I need to contact of like how I can get to places without using my car until I can get it into a shop and then going from there. And then, okay, what are some smaller things that I originally planned on doing that aren't necessarily important right now? And then 
you know, just kind of working my way through that. And then obviously, you know, putting God first in the moment and just being like, okay, like I got this all set. Now I just need to trust God <laughs> and just hope and pray that, you know, everything works out and it'll all just fall into place. And, and that's kind of my process with it right now, because again, like I said, I, yesterday was a rough day. I got pulled over, but thankfully I did not get ticketed. So that was good. <laughs> um, but yeah, like just small little things that kind of like can really dictate your day and go from like having a decent day to just it, it being horrible. And so just being able to sit down and just kind of like evaluate your schedule definitely helps a lot. So yeah, and like you said, dealing with a day, you know, sometimes we all have really bad days and that can be really taking a toll on us by the end of it. And sometimes we just kind of sit back and, you know, rethink of why we're going through this and why are we, you know, dealing with all these issues. Um, but then you sit and you actually pray about it and you ask God for, you know, some guidance. And he says, listen, this is the way, you know, this is why we're doing this. Look at the, look at what's going to happen here two years down the road. You may not see that yet, but it will happen. And so kind of a short story for you, I, in high school, I actually prayed for patience, which is something you never should do. And those of you that are listening and watching, don't pray for patience because I'm telling you right now, it will be a very bad decision. But at the same time, it's a good decision because it's something that I did need to work on. And so I prayed for patience one day when we had a, a, a speaker come in and talk about it. And we wrote on the puzzle pieces of what we wanted to pray about and what we needed to work on for that year. Well, mine, of course, being high school kid, I wrote patience and decided, you know, I'm going to work on this. Well, I, then I got stuck in high school classes with one other person. So it was just me, one other person that I really did not like in high school, but later d found out that that's exactly what I needed. So despite having to do all that, you know, what's something you pray for patience? What's, the, what's something you need to pray for to kind of work with the patience, Abby? I just pray for just calmness and that's, that's weird for me to say honestly but I just calm down because I have high anxiety myself and when I get this high anxiety I just need to sit down every night and just pray just to calm down and say everything happens for a reason life goes on it's all going to be okay and Josh what do you think I honestly agree with that point and it's I think it's so important because obviously if we don't have the peace and the calmness to deal with our schedules then it just gets more and more hectic and then it'll pile on and then next thing you know everything just kind of topples and just falls into pieces and so I think obviously obvious, um, praying about that praying that you you have the calmness and have the peace to be able to go about your day and and just kind of sit down for a moment and take a break rather than, you know, okay, I need to run, run, run. Just sitting down, reevaluating, understanding that, you know, everything's going to fall into place. It's just another day. You know, it's all going to work out. God has a plan in this moment, whether you like the plan in the moment or not. That's always the other fun part to it. But, you know, just trusting that he does have this big ultimate plan for us that, you know, this one thing that happens that looks so terrible, you're going to be able to use it for the next moment. And so I find that really, really cool because I've seen that in my life over the course of time. Um, when I was growing back my faith after um, coming back from college, actually, it was it was a journey because I didn't really like to deal with patients. I didn't like to sit and I didn't really have a plan for my life. And so I had an entire year just of you know, waiting and just being patient of like, God, like, where are you calling me to go? And so that's just kind of how it led me to here. And it just works out that way. And it's just really cool to see and then look back and be like, oh, yeah, that was a that was for sure a God moment. Like he he did that because I was patient in the moment and I trusted that he had this big plan for me. Yeah. And like you said, dealing with plans and stuff is we sometimes pray for things that we want not necessarily what we need and we wait and wait and that takes a lot of patience to try to figure out you know hey you know I want to pray for someone to have good health or I want good health by the end of the day and we wait all day and to see if that's going to happen and sometimes people lose their faith over that 
and we just kind of they look at us and say you know why are you keeping the faith for that why are you keep following god when he doesn't answer your prayers in reality for me he answers my prayers they may not be the answer i want but it's the answer that i need and so abby what's kind of a off the head um something that you prayed for that you waited so long and then realized that the answer that you wanted is not necessarily there and you needed a better answer than that so this past summer i was actually supposed to move to orlando and move down for the disney college program and i kind of had a jesus heart to heart moment like a jesus meeting in my own bed when i was sick with covid and i kind of got the message saying you're not ready to go yet you're not ready you moved back home for a reason and I'm gonna stick to that message and I stuck to it and God kind of told me that hey you're staying at home you're not moving away yet and I was like that's not what I wanted to hear but I guess so I went with it and here I am today yeah and we're absolutely glad to have you here at Rio Rocket Rio and you've got some things coming up you're I think you're going on fall retreat I think I say seen your name on the roster and you know, I know you went last year for fall retreat. For those who haven't been, what's kind of a highlight for you going into fall retreat? Fall retreat is like a peaceful getaway from school and work and like all your busy schedules. But from last year, my key thing was when we went hiking and we would just stop. And Noah McCoon, who is our worship leader, he would just pick out the guitar and just start playing. And that was like a moment where I just felt at ease and that we were in the mountains hiking and it was just very calmful and it was just a very highlight very good highlight yeah and so far I've heard very good things I'm unfortunately not going to be able to be here there for fall retreat this year due to some other scheduling things um, but hopefully next year that that will turn um, so we really appreciate you you know coming in uh, I think we got some scripture for us to read I'm going to read James 5.8, and this is the New International Version, uh, so it kind of changes a little bit wording, um, but this is the version that we're sticking with today. Um, it says, you too, be patient, stand firm, because the Lord is coming and is near, which says a lot into that. And so, Abby, you got Philipp Philippians uh, 4.8. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is is admirable if anything is excellent of praiseworthy think about such things and then i have proverbs 14 29 and it says whoever is patient has great understanding but one who is quick tempered displays folly all right so i'm going to pray us out um father god i just thank you for this time i thank you for just this good conversation that we all need um, just a little bit about learning a little bit more about patience because um, I know that it can be really, really hard sometimes to be patient in those moments and especially when we don't know what the plans are that you have for us and, and things can get hectic because life is not always fun or enjoyable, but we know that you have full control of that, that you are in control and that you know better than what we would ever know. And so God, we just give this all to you, and we just thank you for this podcast. Help it to um, reach the people that are listening today and watching, that um, they may take something away from this, that we can just uh, pour in the lives of others and just go and be disciples to all the nations. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 And if you want to get connected to Rock with uh, watching us on YouTube, um, as well as listening in on podcasts, or on, uh, um, I can't think of the word, Spotify, and then uh, you can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Reach Out on Campus at Rio, as well as OU if you're up that way. Um, if any student at Rio uh, can come in, we uh, have our meetings on Mondays, um, every Monday at 6:30 at Bob Evans Hall, Room 111. Um, welcome to come anytime. Um, our posters are all over the campus at, here at Rio. Um, I'm not sure if they have decided to do anything at uh, OU. I know I gave Dodger a little bit of beef about it. Um, last week, um, but that's hopefully coming. Um, we also have a new event, like uh, we talked with Abby a little bit. Uh, Fall Retreat is October 14th through the 16th. It's $30 a person. If you bring a person that, if you're a member of Rock and you want to bring a person um, that is new to Rock, they get to come free, free of charge. Um, you get an excellent spot to sleep in. 
Um, it is required that you bring a either an air mattress or a sleeping bag um, due to where you're going to be sleeping. If you have any questions, you feel free to DM us or message us on Facebook or Instagram. Um, if you want us to come out to your local church and preach or minister or just sit down and talk for after service lunch, uh, we're glad to come out. And thanks, you, thank you all for watching and listening for Belong Become Be Sent. Hope to see you next crosswalk.